Hey there. I've been getting a lot of comments recently about how do people get a clean UI that is very similar to mine? Or how do I set up my user interface to track certain party timers? And I've been getting a lot of similar questions. And for the longest time, I've always mentioned that one of these days, I would create a guide, a video guide on how you can build a very similar UI that is tailored to your preference. And I finally got off my lazy ass to do that. So this is basically the video of me taking you through the thoughts behind my own UI. If at the end of the video you like the UI, you can simply just download it um, and import it directly into your game. And I'll also cover how to do that. But there's several components I'd like to talk about today. The first really is about how do you make your UI look good and at the same time useful. I think you, the UI, the user interface is basically the window through which you enjoy World of Warcraft. It is the lens at which you appreciate Azeroth true. And so it's so important that you actually are comfortable and you like what you see on screen because the UI is such an integral part of your gaming experience. And in this first component, I'll talk about what is the basic design principles in making a UI look good. At the end of the day, you can choose another UI. You can even build your own. But what is the necessary components um, that makes a UI look good in general? So that will be covered in the first section. In the second component, I will talk about the importance of tracking your own cooldowns and resources and how I think about the importance of placing them at the right parts of the screen. The next section I'll talk about moving away from yourself, the party that you're running the key with. What do you need to track for your party? And how do you track it? Where do you track it? The next thing I'll cover in this video is the importance of tracking bosses' abilities and timers. As you can see, we are working on a boss right now in Motherload. Uh, this is part of a plus 22 key that we timed. And it's essential that you know I'm looking at boss timers and understanding what is happening next and absorbing information. So that is the next section I'll cover. And lastly, I'll round up the video with just a 101 on how you can import my UI directly into your game without any customization, any fuss. So those are the five things I'll cover in the video today. So let's get started. So in this first section, I would like to talk about some principles behind making your UI look beautiful. And I think you can draw a lot of lessons from real life. If you think about photography, the idea about something looking simple and mi minimalistic, it's a beauty in itself. And that is the kind of approach that I've used for my UI as well. Take, you know, simple things like a font, for example. I actually make it a point to just use a single font throughout my entire UI. And little things like that makes a big difference because of consistency. Your eye naturally appreciates things that are in order. You look at my unit frames here, even like the numbers on my weak aura tracking my cooldowns to my damage meters to my chat they are all using the same exact font consistency results in beauty just by itself and consistency is not just about fonts it's also about where you place things for example all my unit bars and my party bars and my kick bars they are all vertically aligned via the straight line drawn by my cursor right now. And even like if you think about my target frame, my player frame, my externals that I'm tracking as a as a tank, right? Tank externals, they are all horizontally aligned. And when there's order in the things that you design, there's natural beauty behind um, you know, what you eventually come up with. One last thing I'll talk about having a minimalistic UI. It is not just for 
having the feel of a clean um, user interface to play with. It is also functional. It's actually very useful for a tank. By having a clean UI, you make sure that your screen is not cluttered, right? As you can see, the majority of my screen allows me to enjoy the game, allows me to appreciate what's happening in the background, and it allows me to ensure that I am not being blinded by anything that doesn't require my attention. And as a tank, it's super important that, you know, you watch things like your positioning as your character, the positioning of the mobs, the cooldowns on the mobs, uh, you know, the cooldowns of certain boss mods. And at the same time, you know, looking at your own resources and your own rotation. So the idea about a minimalistic UI allows you to be a better player by just allowing you to have more situational awareness. And think about the default UI that World of Warcraft have, right? When you first boot up World of Warcraft, the default UI has so much uncluttered space, right? And this is basically what you want in a clean UI uh, for a Mythic Plus tank as well. So you do not miss a single action that is going on in your screen. And that concludes basically the first section. So let's move on to talk about, you know, the importance of tracking your own cooldowns and resources. So let's talk about why is it important to track, you know, your own resources and your cooldowns. As a Mythic Plus tank, your job is to make sure that, you know, you stay alive. And a big part of tanking is basically tracking your mitigation uptime as well as what tools you have in your defensive toolkit to allow you to survive. And also more importantly, just tracking your cooldowns allows you to play your class better, to play your rotation better, to do more damage per second, ultimately helping your team complete the key faster and in a much smoother manner. So how do I think about you know, tracking my cooldowns in the first place? The very first thing I start with is actually about positioning. Where do my eyes spend the most time on, on the screen? I think in World of Warcraft, my eyes are always centered on my character, right? Think about most of the time where um, I'm actually looking at a monitor, it's usually around my character. You seldom have to glance beyond, you know, to the edges of the screen in order to find um, the information you need. And because I spend so much time in the middle of the screen, I want to be able to very quickly, at a glance, uh, look at my cooldowns um, to be able to see what defenses do I have up. Like, as you can see right now, I know I have a Divine Shield that's running out in one second. I know Shield of the Righteous is running out in the next three seconds. And from this recharging three yellow bars here, I know my Shield of the Righteous, the first charge is about to come back up. Right? So very quickly at a glance, I'm able to tell what are my options and what are my outs when I'm in trouble as a tank. And not only that, like, if you look at the first row, the very first row just below my character, it's basically my rotation. How, how do I ensure I do the maximum amount of DPS? Um, it's basically to use your cooldowns, or rather your abilities when they come up on cooldown, right? So as, as a Paladin, uh, Judgment, and Shield, um, those are really key abilities that are part of your rotation. And you want to be able to very quickly tell when you're tanking whether they are ready to be used or not. Um, and that's how I basically align uh, my weak auras. Everything that is tracking my cooldowns here are all weak auras. There's one group of weak auras that basically track in the first row anything that is rotation related, which is essentially as a prod paladin, these four buttons here, right? And over on the right is basically my on-use trinkets, on-use racials. So this is basically my, my Azerite, sorry, my Essence, my major Essence, which is Lucid's. My on-use Nazov trinket and my on-use racial. So to me, this is like the first um, row of abilities and utility I want to track. Then next comes on the second row, the offensive uh, cooldowns, which is basically my, my wings, followed by 
the defensives I have, which is basically Arden Defender and um, Guardian, right? Uh, Guardian of Kings. And after that is the utility spells, which is basically sacrifice that I can use on the party, blessing or protection that I can use on the party, and divine shield, which is basically, well, for myself, and lay on hands that I can use for the party, uh, the two charges of the horse that I have, the stun that I have, the cleanse that I have. So I would say the first row are things that I use very often, usually when they are off cooldown. And the second row is really like situational and depending on you know what is happening on the screen, I might need to use them um, according to the scenarios I'm in. So, and therefore the, the, the second group that I just described, they are technically um, less frequently referenced. And that's why they're on the second row here. So that allows my eyes to basically travel the least amount of distance from the center to find the information I need ASAP. I think a lot of people, they actually run their keybinds and they track their abilities at the bottom of the, the screen, which is basically by default, the, the World of Warcraft UI. You have your keybinds at the bottom and that's where you track whether they are up. And I think different people have different behavioral patterns, but I actually feel like continuously glancing from the middle of the screen to the bottom of the screen to check my abilities results in me being able to react um, you know, less quickly to what's happening in the middle of the screen. And I suspect that is how some people have uh, you know, the, the syndrome, which is basically what we call tunneling, like tunneling onto a mob, not looking at your surroundings. And that's really because you're spending too much time searching for information when the information you need should be immediately below your eye line. So that is how I've designed, uh, you know, tracking my own cooldowns and resources. Um, and as you can see, when it comes to defensives, right, the mitigation that I have up, I have it directly below my character because that is really all you need to know as a tank. Like, I know Shield of the Righteous is running out in 10 seconds, after which I probably need to chain an ability or call for a cooldown from my healer uh, which I'm tracking um, his externals on, right? Which is something for the next section. But yeah, that basically concludes how I track my own abilities and cooldowns. And it's entirely done through weak auras that you can easily download um, in, a, in a document that I will provide in the description below. So that's it for the second section. Um, I would like to move on to the third section now. So in this section, I would like to talk about the importance of tracking your party's cooldowns and interrupts in Mythic Plus. And I think in a lot of ways, this segment is really self-explanatory. Interrupts are so important in Mythic Plus, especially when you're pushing high keys. On fortified weeks or tyrannical weeks, a single miss kick from an ability would make sure that your, your entire party wipes. And as a tank, I think a lot of times you are the short caller of the group. You're calling for interrupts. You're calling for the rotations of the interrupt. If you're doing the spider here with the last boss of a dungeon, you need to be assigning um, interrupts. And it's become such an integral part of Mythic Plus and part of my um, responsibility to call interrupts that basically I have everyone's interrupt bars tracked via a weak aura and it's directly beside my eye line here. Um, so it's really easy for me to just glance over and to see who has um, you know, the next kick. And this is something that when it comes to the party, it's really important that uh, you track. Now, the other thing to note is as a tank, you also need to pull around your party's cooldowns. When, let's say, my Demon Hunter has his Metamorphosis up, that is when I know he will do the maximum amount of damage. When my healer has, you know, Aura Mastery up, I know that, you know, we can afford to take bigger risk when it comes to a pull because he can mitigate a lot of the damage incoming. When he has wings up, I know we could pull big as well because his throughput will be so much higher. 
So likewise for you know DPS in terms of their DPS cooldowns, their utility spells like Darkness, like Rally, those are valuable party cooldowns that you need to be tracking because they allow you to assess whether your your group is able to do a certain pull that is either difficult or or easy, depending on how much cooldowns your party um, you know has. As a tank, um, I'm tracking all these via a weak aura that you can find in the Google Sheet that I will be linking in the description below. Uh, but one thing I'll also mention is that you know when it comes to tracking your party, um, uh, your party's abilities, one of the things that I want to have a very quick um, you know overview of is basically number one the externals that my healer is able to dedicate to me and over here it tells me that as a paladin i know he has a sacrifice and a bop available for me um, if i call for it and these are the cooldowns that's tracking it on the other side on the right hand side here you see i'm tracking the chaos nova a stun from my demon hunter and basically this row of icons um tracks the AoE stuns that my group have. Because as you know, on certain pools like in Atal Dazar, um, the shield barrels will channel a shield. And imagine you know overlapping your AoE stuns on those pools. That is not a most efficient way of you know doing those trash mobs on a fortified week. And so I generally track um, as a separate row itself the externals and the um, AoE cooldowns and CCs that my group have. As you can see, my Demon Hunter just used Chaos Nova on the ads. So this is going on cooldown again. So that is, you know, how I think about tracking your party's cooldowns and the importance of it. Let's now talk about uh, the last bit of your UI frame, which is tracking the boss's abilities. And, you know, we had a very good segue here because right in this Motherload 22, we are tackling the boss right now. And as you can see, it's very vital that I track via big wigs how long before the next um, smash. Because I know that smash is currently on 10 seconds of cooldown. And let's say the ads do spawn here. I know I have 10 seconds to work on the ads, DPS them. And before the 10 seconds is up, I would then position the boss facing uh, the slam against the wall. right? So it allows me to basically preempt what the boss is going to do next without leaving the middle of the screen, right? I just need to glance diagonally downwards that, oh, another smash is coming. The next one is in 17 seconds. I can now turn around, help to DPS um, the ads without risking the boss uh, casting the smash onto people. And now that I know it's five seconds away, I'm dragging the boss closer towards the wall. So he will do the smash against the wall. Um, so that really is about, you know, boss mods. Um, you need one to track them in Mythic Plus so you know exactly where to call for defensives, externals on dangerous abilities, um, and just shot calling in general. It's just good sense to see what the boss is doing next. And that really sums up you know, all the components of um, you know, my UI and how I thought about integrating them. Let's very, very quickly um, now move on to talk about how do you import my exact UI? So we are in the actual game right now, and I'm about to show you how you can import the different profiles that I talked about um, earlier. Obviously, you know, there's some indicators missing here, some weak auras is missing simply because I'm not in the party right now when I'm recording this. But hey, the principles are the same, and I'm just about to show you how you can import the different profiles found in the Google spreadsheet. So let's start with Elf UI. How do you import profiles? The easiest way to access your Elf UI configuration um, panel is basically to type in chat slash EC, which stands for Elf UI configuration. Um, press enter and this panel will pop right out. All you need to do is just to go under profiles and you can click on um, the import profile. And it is over here, you paste the string that you would copy from the link to my Elf UI profile in the Google spreadsheet. Upon that, just click import and basically you'll be running 
uh, my profile. One thing that you should also check for is to ensure that you have add-on skins installed before you import my profile. Um, add-on skins is basically a way to allow LVUI to also skin certain things like, for example, uh, your damage meters, like what you have seen in, in my case over here. So that is really LVUI. It allows you to import my profiles very easily um, to allow everyone to basically have the same look in terms of, you know, having the unit bars, target bar, and where the damage meters should be. The other thing that I didn't quite talk about in this video is basically Plater. So Plater, it's what I use for my nameplates. So what are nameplates? Well, let me fly over to the dummies over here real quick. So nameplates are essentially what you see um, on screen, the yellow ones here. And they, they basically tell you whether I've used certain abilities like um, a stun here, and they track whether I have aggro of them. If it's uh, blue, it's basically it's aggro to me and um, those are useful information that I can have at a glance. Um, you can basically get my Plata profile in the Google spreadsheet as well. And all you need to do is basically type slash Plata in your chat and you'll pull up you know, your Plata options. And all you need to do is go to profiles and you can click on import profiles, paste the string of my Plata profile that I have shared um, as a link in my Google spreadsheet and just click OK and import it and your Plata and your nameplates will look exactly like mine in the videos you have been watching. So that's for Plata, which is what I use for my nameplates um, and that's basically an add-on that you should get as well if you want your nameplates to look like mine. Now let's move on to the bulk of the imports that you'll be doing which is basically weak auras. Now, weak auras is basically an add-on that you should download separately, right? Weak auras. And the moment you've downloaded it, you type slash WA, press enter, and this will pop up. This is basically the weak aura configuration panel. Now it looks intimidating, but all you need to do is just to click on import here on the top, or you can click import here. And you just have to paste the string of the weak auras that I've linked uh, for my UI in this you know, box here. Click done. And basically the weak auras will appear on your screen. Now keep in mind the weak auras that I've linked in the Google spreadsheet um, is for a prod paladin and a prod warrior. Those are the classes that I've been playing. But as part of my, you know, plans for the next expansion and more content to come, I am now toying with the idea of building weak auras for every single class, every single spec. So let me know if you think that would be something that you'd be interested in, um, and I can figure out whether it's worth, you know, the time in creating all these weak auras for all these classes. So hopefully you found the entire video to be useful. And I hope, you know, that allows you to build the UI of your dreams. And if not, that has helped you in, you know, replicating my exact UI and your own game itself. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate the support and I hope to see you soon.